Hi all. The first video I posted on YouTube was about a client of ours that uh, he wanted to have, uh, he has a Cisco ASA firewall, wanted to keep that firewall in the picture, but he wanted to have uh, uh, multiple internet connections and he wanted to, you know, send some specific traffic at one ISP and some specific traffic out another ISP. Um, so he needs to do PBR and the Cisco ASA doesn't do PBR. So I posted a video about putting an edge router uh, outside the firewall where we do the PBR. Um, the requirements changed a little bit so now he wants to have uh, three ISP connections and he doesn't want to actually PBR in there. He wants to now use the aggregate bandwidth between the three ISPs. Um, so we need to do some kind of load balance or load sharing. So I um, thought I'd lab that one for you. Um, so again, our topology then here is we have an internal network 10, 10, 10 slash 24. Uh, we have uh, a, an intermediary network here um, that's uh, 11, 11, 11 dot zero slash 24. It's just between the firewall and the edge router. Uh, it's a 24 because you may in, in the future put a switch here and maybe another device on the outside segment here, right, before it goes through the firewall. Um, there's currently just two connections I'll show you in this lab. Um, he's going to start with two connections right away and then go for a third in the future. Um, connects down to the internet to a remote site. So this site's all numbered, PC1, PC2, switch 1, firewall 1. Over here it's lettered, firewall A, switch A, PCA, um, PCB, right? So again, um, the, the edge router is going to do uh, the load balancing out the two links using uh, IPCEF, Cisco Express Forwarding. Um, it's going to do all the NATing here. The firewall is just going to be the VPN gateway for LAN-to-LAN uh, -LAN IPsec tunnels and uh, SSL RAS VPN tunnels, and it will do the firewalling, but no NATing going on there. Um, so I'll just show you, I guess, um, probably take a couple of videos to get through it all, but uh, we'll start out in the edge router by doing the uh, um, route tracking, because again, we're going to have two ISPs. We want to we want to know, and we're going to load balance them, right? So we want to know when one ISP goes down, want to be aware of that and make sure that all traffic goes out the remaining ISP, right? And then again, when that link comes back up, um, it'll start to load balance again. So we want to track those. So I'll just start with configuring the tracks. So we'll do a uh, track one, response time reporter one, reachability, um, IP SLA one. We'll do an ICMP echo to the next top IP for ISP one. Uh, source interface for that is F00. We'll set the timeout to uh, 1000, the uh, threshold to 2, and the frequency to 3. And we'll do an IPSLA schedule 1. Uh, we'll do the life is forever. And the start time is now. Okay. And then we'll do, uh, oops, we'll do a track two, RTR two reachability, IPSLA two. We'll do an ICMP echo for ISP two next stop. And the source interface there is F zero one. Just put the same values for timeout threshold. And frequency. And we'll do an IP SLA schedule for track two. Um, the lifetime. Start. Start time now. And then we need to do our default routes, right? We'll track one, and then we'll do the same for ISP two, and we'll track two. So if we do a show IP route yeah. track table, good. So uh, default routes are up. They're both being tracked, and the track is up. Um, and then we'll just do uh We'll do an IP access list. Sorry, extended uh, 
101, we'll do a permit, ICMP, any to host. That next top out to ISP1, and we'll do an IP access list extended uh, 102, and we'll do a permit ICMP from any to host. Okay, we'll do a route map. Track ISP, permit 10, match IP address 101, match interface F00, and set IP next top. And then we'll do uh, <clears throat> same route map sequence 20. We'll do a match IP address. 102, match interface, F01, set IP next top. Whoops. Dot two. And then we'll do a IP local policy route map track ISP. So all that's for is to make sure that um, when we're track, you know, we're sending ICMP echoes from within this edge router. So our tracks originating from here, right? Um, it's going to be sent this way when tracking this IP, and it's going to be sent this way when tracking this IP. So if this goes down, we don't want our track to get a response by going this way for this IP and a reply this way, and then keeping this route alive. Uh, so we have the IP local policy apply to those route maps and the route maps are just saying anyone pinging to or sending ICMP to this IP it's going to go this way and same for ISP2 that way our track stays uh, stays current right and I think that's about all I'm going to fit into this video so we'll call this part one um, when we come back uh, the next one we'll configure our um, NATs I guess in edge one and um, we might be able to get to uh, talk about the load balance with IP Ceph. Um, if not, we'll get to that in the third uh, part. But uh, anyway, for the next part, for sure, we'll we'll cover um, netting. Okay, thanks for watching.